Hello friends, welcome to a very warm and toasty and humid day here in North Carolina. Uh, today what we're going to do is I want to show you around some of the things that are going up here at the production area because yes, it is mid-June, it is hotter than Hades out here. We are going through a heat wave like so many of you. Um, so there may not be a whole lot of activity going on at the garden center as far as like the retail space, but there is tons of activity up here at production because um, believe it or not this is a big time for production area and the production side of the nursery of course late winter going into spring we do a ton of annuals this is the time of year where we are doing um, mums believe it or not our fall mums that you love so much that we all love so much this is when we plant them It's right around that Father's Day mark is when we get them in the ground because well when I say in the ground I mean in the pot that's on the ground right um, because they are actually hot weather plants. They love it hot. And so they are growing. So they got those finished today. I'm going to show you that. And we got in a nice big selection of shrubs from Proven Winners, our friends over there at Spring Meadows, um, who are the shrub growers for Proven Winners. We got that in yesterday. And then today we got a shipment of perennials from Walter's Gardens. And we've got those to show you. And I have a new toy that I want to I have not even seen it yet it came in again yesterday morning haven't seen it yet so I want to we're gonna go look at that together but first let's look over here at the mums because as you can tell I have got my sun hat on it is really like high noon right now which is probably not the best time to do a video <laughs> <laughs> or be out in your garden but it is the time that I have allotted that I can do this video so we're gonna go out there I got my sun hat on I got my sun shirt on um, and so yeah we're just gonna go for it I'm already hot and sweaty so what's being a little more hot and sweaty let's just go for it um, so here we are we're up at production and it is going to be very bright but here we have the new mum pad that we showed you the other week there are um, several hundred I think uh, somewhere between three to five hundred mums out here and they are in the 10 inch terracotta pots there are two plants two liners per pot and that will fill in really nicely so we try to kind of color block these these are orange and so um, like this whole row basically is that orange I know there's not sure why that's not a straight row uh, <laughs> that'll drive me crazy gotta fix that but each of these pots has a dripper in it and it is hooked up we were talked about this the other day when Jerry and I were up here how he created this new mum pad. So these mums will be on their own separate irrigation fertigation zone, which makes it really nice uh, because the mums can be quite heavy feeders and they need a good bit of fertilizer um, throughout the growing season so they can be on their own fertigation system. Um, you can see that there is the believe I don't know what size I'll have to put it up there for you because Jerry knows all the information and he's not with me right now as far as like what size these lines are because I know a lot of people ask that um, but yeah so each pot has a dripper in it in the past we would do drip tape um, that didn't work as well once the mums were full size it just got to be really hard to pull them out of the drip tape so we've gone back to using the individual drippers um, and what this part is that's right here on the end that is a weight so that they won't just blow out so even if we get wind they should not blow out but what's going to happen for the next um, really is really critical with it being so hot is that we're going to have to be up here multiple times a day probably making sure that they are getting the water that they need and that this little problem does not happen because we are up here um, in you know native land right and things can happen critters can walk through dogs can walk through um, this is not good so do you see what's happened to this pot is that its dripper has 
somehow fallen out of it. So you've got to go through and make sure and just walk the shrub lot, the mum lot, a couple of times a day, at least twice a day, morning and evening really, and make sure that that dripper's in there because if not, those little mums will be dead within um, very soon. <laughs> in this heat, it will not take long at all to um, lose these mums. So of course, we want to make sure that they are well watered and taken care of. But yeah, so they sit out on this black plastic um, in this heat, they love it. Um, once we make sure that they're nice and well watered in, then they just go. Um, pretty hands off. Jerry monitors their water, of course, and their fertilizer. And it is just, yeah, I mean, it's a relatively easy crop. Everybody asks if we have deer problems. We do have deer in the area, but they really leave our plants alone. It's really kind of funny because the one crop that they will touch it are the mums and it's funny because it always happens on the outer edge and there'll be like three three to five plants that you can tell when they get to be about medium height that they come and get nibbled on and then it's like i say it's like the teenagers they want to try it out first they try it and then they're like oh no this does not taste good forget this i'm going to go back into the woods and eat what i'm supposed to eat so it's really funny. Um, so deer really leave this alone. Now, coming over here, you will see, of course, we still have tons of room um, with the black plastic. This is actually landscape fabric. Um, so water does go through it that they have laid out. This is where all of the new um, shrubs will go. They're, they're gonna start potting up next. And we will kind of continue if we need to to bring the extend this new shrub portion all the way up here but you can see where the irrigation line kind of comes up um, he will eventually well this part will be the uh, the shrub lot so he doesn't need to bury this because the black the landscape fabric will come up to it and then you can see where he has gone underground um, was trenching with the bobcat and all of that so here he has his valves and all the good information right there that controls all the different zones and then it travels all the way back to the well so you can see how far he trenched went directly from the well all the way out here and which is really nice he went ahead and installed a spigot a faucet so we have this great faucet right here that we can have access to whether it's filling up buckets or you can see we have some hoses right here where they were going ahead and watering in those mums so all of those additives with the irrigation are here and it makes it really nice to be able to um, have that around here. So that's kind of the update on the mums. Let's go look at the shrubs because I think they're just right up here. Um, our sweet folks were unboxing them and so let's go take a look at those. All right so behind me you will see that we have all of the um, shrubs from Proven Winners, they are unboxed and there are quite a few of them. These are all um, a quart size container of a plant. So like for example, right here we have Sprinter Boxwoods. And so the Sprinter Boxwoods that we know and love, there you go. That's how they come to us. We pot them up in either a two gallon or a three gallon container and then we grow them out for you. Basically it can be, on some plants, it can be um, a very short growing season. So for example, let's find, um, we've got some, let's see, these are hydrangeas. This is limelight prime right here. So this is how our limelight primes, they look when they're little, when they're a baby, right? So they came all the way from Michigan. This is the way they look. This could be ready by this fall. Um, last year we were growing them and we had some ready by the fall. So they could be ready. Sprinters tend to take a little bit of a longer time on them. So those are a little bit slower. Um, they may be for like in two years, they will be ready. So we have to constantly think about what we have, um, what's in stock, what are we gonna grow, and the timing and know how fast they turn around for us. So here we've got some roses. They, um, we've also got 
Um, over here, I can see the tag. This is the new Reminiscent Crema rose, that beautiful creamy white rose that goes into the landscape. So we've got those back there, that pop of color. That is the Barberry. I bet that's the Sunjoy Neo. We've got that. Um, Lots of hydrangeas, of course. Lots of butterfly bushes right here. Let's see, we've got something dark. Let's figure out what that may be. And of course, everybody has a tag on it. Oh, good. This is the center stage. This is a crepe myrtle. So we've got center stage red and coral. These are fantastic, beautiful um, crepe myrtles that would grow into a tree. They're not going to be a huge crepe myrtle. So they're going to be in that average like 12 foot. Um, so this is uh, obviously is going to be a long crop for us. So we will have those, um, but just that beautiful dark foliage and will do great for us. And then right here, you can see we've got some Roses of Sharon. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of how a shrub comes to us um, from Spring Meadow. We even have some over here that are not even um, quartz. They're more of a little bit of a smaller size than that. So this is the Pugster Pinker. Um, and you can see, can you see that container, right? So it's, it's a relatively and I say smallish container. This is how we ordered them. Um, but again, butterfly bushes grow pretty fast. So we will have those soon. And then look at this. Look at this sweet. This is the blue chiffon. One of my favorite roses of Sharon. It's just a gorgeous color. Again, it's in that smaller container. But man, she's small, but she's still blooming. So much fun looks fantastic so we will get these out um, over here onto the fabric that's behind me if you can see that hole right there that's where they're going to go because this is, of course has the automated water so they've got to get out there and so they get lots of water they will be taken care of we will sort them by um, group of who they are and all that other good stuff so that families can stay together um, and now we're gonna go over there and let's look at perennials got some new perennials in all right so here we are underneath the dry storage because it has white plastic on it so it's a little bit cooler in here um, than even like say the greenhouses even though they're open this white plastic really kind of cools things off and it's hot I'm not gonna lie y'all it's uh, yeah it's toasty so I know I look a fright but hey it's a good thing gardening is not a beauty pageant right <laughs> We're all in here together. All right, so we only got just a few of um, perennials, not not too much of a massive order, but these all do really well growing in, in heat. There was, there were some issues in shipping. Um, so you can see that these poor um, Roseanne geraniums got tossed around pretty, pretty heavily. So we'll have to watch those. Um, and that's another reason we have them here in the shade. We do not want to stick those out in the sun. That would not be good for them. Um, calling all of my spot on pulmonaria lovers. Here we go. We've got two trays of it for you. Fantastic shade perennial um, to incorporate with your hostas and your brunnera and your ferns. Just a fantastic perennial. Does really pretty pink and blue flowers in the early spring. Uh, we've got some Coreopsis right here. This is the uptick bronze, golden bronze wonderful um, reblooming continuous blooming perennial um, but this is how it comes to us so these are probably 72s i'm gonna say and we will pot these up in gallons and they will do great coreopsis is a great hot weather plant and then we've got the lemon love euchara wonderful bright shade um, pop of color for your garden again incorporate it with your hostas and all sorts of fun things this is a Velosa species, and the Velosas are native to Southeast United States. So it does really, really well in our hot, humid weather, which is why I love it so much. And then we've got some perennial grasses. Um, let's flip over here and see what the names of these babies are because they're printed on here. So, oh, here we go, Apache Rose. So Apache Rose is um, the same grass that I have in the Gatsby Gal bed. Y'all have asked me what that is. This is Apache Rose, really upright, gorgeous color. And then in the fall, it will have a beautiful pink shade to it. And then this is, oh, Cheyenne Sky. Cheyenne Sky is another fantastic panicum. Both of these are panicum type grasses. 
have this down in the new beds close to um, in the backyard a little bit shorter shorter than apache rose beautiful fall color fantastic so um, these are going to hang out here because of the heat and it's the middle of the day and we want to take care of them so they'll just kind of hang out here with us until we get them potted up but yeah so now let me go show you my new toy that i got all right the last thing that i want to show you today is the new toy that jenny got it's really not a toy it is a fantastic new piece of equipment that is going to like make my life a lot easier much more efficient and my plants are going to be so much happier what am i talking about i am talking about this um, 100 gallon sprayer we will be able to attach it to the back of the tractor it is pto driven you can see again it just arrived yesterday on the pallet but it is it's a hundred gallon tank so i can either use it just for straight watering like uh by the entrance to the the nursery up there by the gate um, that is not on irrigation and with temperatures like they are right now plants are suffering so what i have to do is haul buckets up there and water it that way with this lovely addition i can just fill it up 100 gallons of beautiful clear water hook it to the back of the tractor um, and off we go and it has this great hose reel I'm not sure how long the hose is. I'd have to look at the um, specs on that, uh, but you can see that it has great hose, nice size. It has a, a wonderful spot for your um, nozzle to go. So I can use this if I want to, or if I want to use like my dram hose, like my dram um, nozzles rather, I can use that on it as well. Oh, look, there's another nozzle right there. Not sure what the different nozzles are, but hey, very adaptable and then of course when i'm done i can reel it back up using this now not only can i use it for um just watering but the main thing is my main goal was of course is to be able to fertilize because we've got so many different display beds throughout both the house and the nursery and all the surrounding gardens um, with those annuals they really need to have lots of good food because they are heavy feeders and this will make life so much easier because maybe i only have to fill it up one time make a huge batch of that great fertilizer water drive around water everything in and just keep on moving i'm not going to have to stop and make five gallon buckets and carry them around so it's going to be make things much more efficient plants are going to be happier um so stinking excited about this it's great we were looking at like doing the 50 gallon and then i was like well jerry that's only 10 five gallon buckets and that's nothing with as much as we have so we went ahead and went with the 100 gallon super excited about it of course once we use it for the first time um, we will show you. Uh, I thought about doing it today, but it's midday. It's hot. Jerry's not here. And I was like, yeah, nah. I'll just show it to you. And then once we use it, of course, I'll show you all the bells and whistles and how she works. Um, but as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This a little bit side of a production and how things are going here at the nursery. Once we do some potting up, I will go in and show you more specifics as far as like all the different shrubs that we got. Um, and this order of the perennials was not a huge order. It was just a nice, these grow well in the summer. So that's why we're getting them here in the heat growing them now and they will be nice and happy plants uh, but of course we'll keep you updated on how everything is doing here at production but as always thanks so much for gardening with creekside y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video bye friends